Hi, so today I wanted to show you how you can create the mechanics of the snake game using really just a tile map, a timer, and a node that can control what's happening on top of this. So let's take a look. Now, first of all, the timer, I just set it to a wait time of 0.2. This is basically how often a game tick is going to happen, so how often you are going to move. So if you want this to happen faster or slower, you can just adjust this time and that should be fine. We don't use one shot or auto start. Now the tile map, I set out to be using the go dot icon four times. So I just made four tiles, they all look the same, just I added a modulate. Let's see. Visibility. Ah, oh, we can't actually see it here. We need to go onto the tile set. On here. And I selected the same area four times and then you can see here I set a modulate for them. They are on top of each other so it's hard to click them. You wouldn't really want to use this normally but since I'm just using this for demonstration this much is fine. Otherwise you can just set multiple tiles and do this properly. Now let's give this a script and see what's happening. Now the first thing we're going to want in the script is a timeout. So whenever the timer here triggers we want something to happen. So we might as well connect that and have this part taken care of for later. Next, I'm just going to remove the default stuff. Now, our snake, I'm just going to do our snack equals empty list, because that's how the snake is going to be stored, so we know what to do later. Let's see, we want to keep track of whether the game is over, so we can make a variable bar game over equals false. In addition to that, let's just make sure we can keep track of a few more things. Let's see. I will be adding on ready var map equals the tile map. That way we don't have to keep doing this manually. And I just do the same thing on ready var timer equals dollar timer. So that makes these a little bit easier. And the rest we can take care of later. Now, let's get a ready function in here. When we are first starting out, we want to, first of all, position a snake to start out with. So let's just put a vector 2 to define our position, and I just put it into position 5.5, five, and that should be fine. Now we can say set cell V on the map, and just grab whatever that position is, and set it to 1. Now for the colors here, let me just show you quick. Zero is green, the grass tiles. One is the snake. Two is apples. And three is the black outline. That's how I set them up. If you have different numbers, just use those instead. So actually we can launch this quick. And we can see here our snake is spawning. Obviously nothing can move yet, but we'll get to that in a moment. Now var temp equals vector 2 dot 0 because now what I'm gonna do is I will be checking the input directions. If it's action just pressed, right? We set the vector to 1 comma 0 so we move to the right. If input dot is action just pressed left, we do the opposite of that, and that's just how it keeps going for all of these. Now, depending on how you want to prioritize these, you can just put an elif here instead. That way you just save a little bit of computation, but honestly, I don't think it really matters. Either way, you can only move in one direction at a time, so that's fine. The reason I'm using a temporary variable here is because just since we have an input, that doesn't necessarily mean we're going to actually be moving in that direction just yet. For example, we're not actually allowed to be moving back to where we just came from. That's uh, generally just ignored if you do this input in a snake game, and that's what we do here as well. Um, so first of all, if temp doesn't equal vector 2.0, because if it's zero, we just want to do, we don't want to react. And 
let's see now we want to compare to our last direction we don't actually know what our last direction is so we can make a variable for that now let's just go here and say var last direction equals vector 2 dot 0 and while we're at it we're also getting one for the next direction equals vector 2 dot 0 so the next direction is what's going to be set here if temp passes the requirements so let's see last year should not be equal to temp multiply with minus one so we invert the vector if there's a one we turn it into a minus one and vice versa zeros are ignored so we don't want last year to be equal to the opposite vector of this since we cannot backtrack in snake additionally we want to check if we game over yet so and not game over because if we are game over nothing should ever happen so in this case we can just say next direction is equal to temp and timer.start and while we're at it i'm actually writing all of this code in the wrong place obviously actually this should not be in there i just copy it over into process because over here we pass for now if the timer isn't doing anything yet it will do soon so instead let's just call on timer timeout here because that will be relevant soon mm, one more thing let's see timer.stop because in case the timer is already running when putting an input i just want the movement to happen instantly so what i'm gonna do is i stop the timer resetting it and i start it again but i am just calling the timeout function manually once because that's where the movement is actually gonna happen with the part up here deciding where we are going to move this part here deciding if we are going to move and this part here calling the timer and the actual movement now we just gotta implement the movement itself which is interacting with the timer so what we can do in the timeout is if the next direction is equal to vector 2.0 we can stop the timer and return because if there's no direction set then something went wrong or we haven't started yet or whatever then the timer just shouldn't be running so this is just a catch in case anything isn't working as intended then what we want to know is where is the current head of the snake so we can say snake of minus one because the last element of the list is where our head currently is going to be then we can say what's the last part so the last chunk of the tail that's at position zero and say the next position is head whatever is saved in head which is going to be a vector two so we can say our next position is going to be head plus next year because head next year up here is set as a vector two so we can just add them up our snake currently doesn't contain the next node yet so let's just add it up here snake dot append next so it's added to the end of the snake so this is another vector 2 specifying the position of the new head now var next cell equals map dot get cell v next so what we're doing here we want to see what kind of cell is at the position our new head should be the next head so this is going to give us a number, which is one of the numbers in here, 0, 1, 2, or 3. Depending on this number, we want to act differently. So we can just say match next cell, and then find out what to do about it. If our next cell is 0, that is grass, then we want to say set cell v to uh, at the last position. So our tail is set to 0 because it's currently blue it's currently one and we want to turn our tail back to grass since our head moved one ahead the uh, tail needs to move one as well now to actually move the head though we can just say set cell v of next to one so this one here is set from one to zero and this one here is set from zero to one and that's how our snake moves by one cell yes actually we can go with two next because the case of one and three don't really matter because in either case we die 
So let's take a look at two. Now two is our apple. What are we doing if we hit an apple? We do map.set cell v next comma one because we're still moving our hat there. We still want a blue tile where our new hat is. But we're not removing a tile at the back because we are going to get longer here. So essentially this part this part here is just going to be skipped and we probably are going to want to spawn a new apple but currently there's no function for that so let's just create a placeholder function to fill later uh, spawn apple pass and call that here we can take the same function just copy it over and also call that here an already function since we want to spawn an apple here as well now that is the cases 0 and 2. Now for all other cases we want to handle them the same so we use underscore to define what the default case should be. So underscore is basically what happens if neither of the ones above so 0 or 2 are triggering. Now in the default case we can just say gain over is equal to true and we can stop the timer uh, just timer dot stop and while we add it just to make it visible so it's easily for us to tell if everything is working let's just set our modulate dot a to 0 0.5 so everything should turn kind of gray because the clear color is gonna shine through since we are lowering our alpha value without changing any of the other colors so now with everything in computation done in here we want to set the last steer or previous steer or whatever we want to call it to next year because this step is done and next year isn't needed anymore so we can update all of this that should be useful in the next frame now that looks pretty complete we don't really need to spawn apples yet let's just see if everything's working oh no that's definitely still an issue the movement's working fine the replacing isn't death is fine as well so the only issue we're having here is that it's acting as if there's always an apple or not removing the previous tile correctly the reason it's doing that is because in this case here we aren't actually removing the snake tile we are removing the saddle from from the map but we're not removing it from our list so let us do that now snake dot remove position zero because yeah that's the one we're trying to get rid of let's see okay now it works as intended we can move we move a bit faster if i click a lot but just slightly now with that taken care of let's spawn apples so to spawn apples we can just say greens we want a list of all green tiles on the map and then we randomly select one of these tiles so for i in range of 28 our field is 28 wide or j in range of 15 my field is uh, 15 tall if you have different numbers you can just check your tile map here it starts at position 1 1 and it goes until position 28 15 so these are the numbers we're going to work with in our range case the c is going to go from 0 to 27 so if we just add 1 to it it's fine now if map dot get cell i plus one j plus one is equal to zero then we want to append our value to the list i plus one j plus one i forgot to use the append call that's why it's looking like that typo now then we just want to say map dot set cell v and now we need one random value from this list we just created so we say greens list at position random in integer random integer modulo length of greens so it picks a random number from all numbers puts modulo of the length of green so the number gets scaled to be somewhere within the list and then it just gets the value we just picked there and we set that to two because two is our red color for apples let's test it ah we're getting longer fine and that is how you can create snake using only a tile map
even if you want to design this a little bit more to make it fancier, you can still use the tile map approach in the background and just overlay some graphics to make it look neater. But the general snake mechanics are essentially covered by this. There isn't much more going on in Snake.